What's up everyone, Willy Apple here. We saw an eventful week in software this week. We first saw iOS 18.6 release candidate to everyone. Then we saw the fourth beta of iOS 26, iPadOS 26, macOS 26, watchOS 26, all those kinds of software. And then on Thursday, we saw the public beta. We had a really eventful week in software. Probably one of the biggest ones we had in a long time since DubDub. But I'm here to talk about some additional changes and my experience overall with Beta 4. And something new I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be giving a software stability report. So stay tuned for that. But let's get started by doing additional changes inside of macOS Tahoe. All right, the first additional change is that if you were to go inside the system information app and scroll down the graphics slash displays, you're gonna see that metal support now says metal four. In previous betas, this would say metal three, but now it says metal four. And I actually did run a little Geekbench test right here to see if it does affect anything. And my score was 55, 128. And now if we were to compare it to 15.5, we will see that it is 55, 060. So it looks like this was a margin of error difference. There is no difference in performance, at least right now. Now, I am not much of a metal developer, so I don't know if this is true or not. Maybe all it was is that the graphics APIs were inside of macOS. It just identified itself as Metal 3. Now, keep in mind, if you do have Intel, this will still be Metal 3 because Metal 4 is Apple Silicon exclusive only. It could also be that Geekbench here needs to be updated in order for it to take advantage of Metal 4. But we'll have to wait and see if that's actually the case or not. Now the next change is inside the preview app. If you were to look right here, you're going to see you can now easily remove the background inside of pre the preview app. So before what you had to do is you had to go inside a desktop and then you had to go inside of your screenshots, go into quick actions, and then choose remove background just like that. That is no longer the case inside this beta. You can now do it straight inside the preview app if you prefer to do that way. And now the next thing is that if you were to go inside the apps app, close it, and then go to spotlight, it would go inside the apps app before, it would not go back to Spotlight. So here it is right here, I open up the apps app, I'm closing it, and I'm going into Spotlight. So this seems to be happening 100% of the time now, and not being annoying and staying inside the apps app now, which is the behavior I expect. Now that's one of the reasons why I hated the apps app, and now I think the apps app is pretty much perfect for me. Now I know a lot of people are still going to prefer a Launchpad, but I think the Apps app is actually really good now. And I don't think I'm going to be switching back to Launchpad now. I have it inside of Beta 4, and I just feel like it's perfect now. Now I'm going to give my overall review of the latest beta of Tahoe. And according to my stability report, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Beta 1 would have been a 4 out of 10, mainly because my Emo MacBook Air was really bad on it. And battery life wasn't really the best. Battery life in this latest version of Tahoe has been really good on here. Here's the little battery chart, and as you can see, it's pretty much on par with macOS Sequoia. Now bugs that I still have is that AppKit based apps will not be sliding out to close. If we were to open up a Swift UI based app, you're going to see that it immediately fades to close just pretty easily, just like that. But for whatever reason, apps like the App Store, even if we were to do this, will not close like that. It will fade open to open, but it will not fade close to close. That's a bug I'm still having in this latest version of Tahoe, but a bug that has been fixed for me is that some websites will be very slow to load. So for example, Mac Rumors would have been very, very slow to open, but now this seems to have been 100% fixed here. But as you can see, because Safari is an app kit based app, it does not have the closing animation, so that's still a bug I still have with Safari as well. My iPhone mirroring also seems to have been 100% fixed here. So before it would just not load at all, but now iPhone mirroring now loads 100% of the time. All right, the next thing, how has to do with file downloading. So if you were to download a file inside of Safari and then if you were to press download, you now get haptic feedback and this dynamic island animation inside of iOS, which is actually really nice to see, especially if you download files a lot inside of Safari. Now the next change has to do with the podcast app. So if you were to go inside of a random podcast and then go inside of settings, if you were to scroll all the way down, you're gonna see a new section right here that says speed and audio adjustments. Now what's the stability report of iOS 26 beta 4? Now I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10, just like Mac OS. Now I only have really minor issues, which I'll go over in a little bit. And this beta feels a lot better, liquid glass is back while it's still being readable, and it actually has more of a point of it existing, which I think is really nice. I honestly can't wait for it to come out to everyone, but I'm also still concerned about people coming over to tech support and stuff like that, since iOS 26 is gonna be a huge change once the average user installs it. And if we were to go over bugs in iPadOS, you're gonna see right here that immediately right off the bat, you can see that the top bar icons are actually touching the status bar 
which is, doesn't look really nice right now. And it also happens to do it inside of here as well. So hopefully that gets fixed in a future beta. Now the next bug fix I have encountered has to do with auto mix. So auto mix would be really bad in all three of the previous betas. It would not work with country music at all. But I've noticed that it's been starting to work with country music most of the time, actually. I'd say around 80% of the time, auto mix just works. Before it would really only work with rap music, now it works most of the time with country music, which I'd say I'm sorry to not like the feature a little bit. It makes the audio kind of really bad quality and slows it down for some reason and speeds it up. I know that's like DJing, but it just seems very inconsistent. So I might just switch back to Crossfade. We'll have to wait and see on that. But overall, it's nice to see that Auto Mix is improving and hopefully it's in a better spot by the final beta. Now, while I can't find any new features inside of WatchWords besides what I've already covered, I'd like to briefly over go over things about my experience. So WatchOS 26 Beta 4 has been really good for me. Now, the only major issue I really have is that this animation sometimes is very slow with the control center. Hopefully that gets fixed in a future beta. Overall, I have to give Apple credit for making WatchOS very polished here. This is the best WatchOS I have felt since WatchOS 9. In fact, it actually beats WatchOS 11 for me, believe it or not. Now, there are still some things that can improve. For example, if we go inside the sound settings, you'll notice that this looks more like the iOS 18 volume slider icon. Now, Apple should round this out just like it is in iOS 26, Mac OS 26, iPad OS 26, basically everywhere because they've updated it, but they've introduced this feature inside of WatchOS 26. So it's incredibly weird to see that the volume slider is the iOS 18 volume slider, basically. And now a bug that I do have with watchOS has to do with widgets. So, so there are two different APIs for configuring widgets, app intent and just regular intent configurations. Intent configurations does not work at all inside of watchOS, which is actually not a really good sign to see. That can mean that Apple is abandoning the original Siri kit and wants developers to use app intents, but my apps have major widgets that still rely on Siri kit intents that just aren't ready to be converted to app intents quite yet. So it is very unfortunate to see that Siri kit intents does not work at all inside of watchOS, but hopefully that gets fixed inside of a future beta. I think it will get fixed inside of a future beta once Apple catches it. I'll be sure to continue sending feedback about it and hopefully you will too. Now to give watchOS a stability rating, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10 because the widgets are just kind of a deal breaker for me. I really wanna use the full potential of my app, but Siri Kit Intent just does not work at all. But other than that, battery life seems to be good, performance seems to be good, and then it's just that basically, and that's it basically for me. Now I like to talk about app development. So I develop apps on a day-to-day -day basis with Xcode, and I actually use the Xcode beta for my apps just so I could take advantage of iOS 26 and get a head start compared to the competition. In beta three, the biggest issue I had is that apps just would not upload to the app store or test play at all if it used the iOS 26 style of app icon. And because I want to get a head start, I do not want to rip the icon from my app. I want to keep it inside the app. Fortunately, that has 100% been fixed inside this latest Xcode beta, which is really nice to see. But there is one exception, one big issue I have, and that has to do with developing watch apps. I am not able to upload my app to the app store or test play at all if I have an app icon. That's right, an app icon. Not the WatchOS 26 style of app icons, any app icon. I tried removing it and just having the WatchOS 26 icon only. I tried only having the WatchOS 11 style of icon. It just would not work at all. So unfortunately inside the latest beta of my app, I had to pull the watch version from it, which is unfortunate to see. Other than that, Xcode has been really good for me. I use it on both macOS Sequoia and Tahoe. So I have experience with both. Anyways, that's my follow-up video about iOS 26, iPadOS 26, macOS Tahoe, and watchOS 26 Beta 4. Thanks for watching. Come on, subscribe to all my apps in the description down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!